In this video, we're going to take a look at absolute value graphs. We're actually going to start with what should be the easiest graph that we have, y equals x. This is not absolute value. This is just a line. And we can probably just graph it using a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. But I'm going to set up a table instead. So let's just go from negative 2 to positive 2. And y equals x means the y values are the same. So when we graph this, here's our line. That should be the easiest first line that we learned how to graph. All right, now let's move on to absolute value using the same x values. So what does absolute value do? Technically, absolute value is the distance from 0. So negative 2 is actually 2 units from 0. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Another way to think about it is every time you take the absolute value of something, you just get a positive answer. So our first two values become positive instead of negative. Our last three stay the same. Now when we go to graph this, the right side of the graph is just like y equals x. But notice, what happens to these negative values down here? They reflect across the x-axis. All of those negative values become positive, and that's what our absolute value graph looks like. So with absolute value graphs, you're going to get this v-shape. Now let's explore how the absolute value graph can change. So there's our y equals absolute value of x. Let's take a look at what happens if instead we have y equals negative absolute value of x. So what happens here is we would multiply all of our y values by a negative 1. So everything becomes negative, except for the 0, of course, because 0 is just 0. There's no negative or positive 0. Now, what happens to our graph when we graph this? All of the y values are now either 0 or negative, and the graph now points down. So these are the two basic shapes of an absolute value graph. You can have a V facing up or a V upside down. And the negative in front of the absolute value is what makes it go down. All right, back to our parent graph of Y equals absolute value of X. What will happen if we put a number in front of the absolute value of X sign? For instance, Y equals 2 times the absolute value of X. What this means is we take our answers from the parent graph and just multiply everything by 2. So everything doubles, and we're left with these points. So what does this look like? Now we have a steeper slope caused by the positive 2 in front. Notice the slope to the right from our vertex at 0, 0. In our parent graph, it's up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Now it's a slope of up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. In order to get the V, though, we also go up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1. Let's take a look at another one. What would happen if we add something to our absolute value of x? For instance, we could have y equals absolute value of x plus 3. So this would take all of our answers that we previously got, and we just go 2 plus 3, 1 plus 3, 0 plus 3, and we end up with something that looks like this. When we graph this, it goes there. So what did the plus 3 on the end do to our original graph? You could say that it moved it up three spaces. This time, we're going to add 3 again, but the difference is we're going to put the plus 3 inside of the absolute value sign. So now we have y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. So if we put negative 2 in for x, we would have negative 2 plus 3, that's positive 1, absolute value of positive 1 is 1. If we put negative 1 in, we get negative 1 plus 3, that's 2, absolute value of 2 is 2, 0 plus 3 is 3, and the absolute value of that is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, absolute value is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, and absolute value is 5. And if we go ahead and graph it, we have something that looks like that. But this doesn't look like the V that we are getting for all of our other absolute value graphs. That's because we have to put in some more values. So we're going to go ahead and add on negative 3 and negative 4, because we need to keep going to the left on our graph. 
And when I put negative 3 into this equation, I get negative 3 plus 3, that's 0. And then when we put negative 4 in, we get negative 4 plus 3, that's negative 1. But the absolute value of negative 1 would be positive 1. So now we've added two more points. And when we add these to our graph, you can see that we can extend down. And now we can go back up. And now we have a V. So the question is, what does that plus 3 inside the absolute value do to our graph? This graph has moved to the left three spaces. So why is that? Well, you can think of our vertex as 0, negative 3. How does that negative 3 compare to our plus 3? That's the opposite of plus 3. Does that sound familiar? Opposite? You might remember opposite, don't change it, from vertex form. Well, that's what's happening here. That plus 3 led to a minus 3 for the x value of our vertex. Now it's time to take some notes on the format of absolute value graphs. This is our basic equation. y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. This should look familiar to us. This looks a lot like vertex form that we use for graphing parabolas. So there's also a vertex for an absolute value graph. It's the bottom of our v or the top of the upside down v. So just like vertex form for parabolas, the vertex of an absolute value graph is simply hk. And you can get that by doing the opposite of what's inside the absolute value and don't change the number on the outside. The a value can be thought of as the slope of our line. And just like graphing lines, positive means you go up and to the right. But that would just give you one side of it. You also have to go to the left to make the v-shape. For negative, it means you're going down and to the right, but you'd also go down and to the left. Let's go ahead and try one. So the first thing we should do is come up with our vertex, our starting point. So the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4, and don't change the negative 3. So we're going to start at the point negative 4, negative 3. So let's graph that. Now we can think of negative 1 half as our slope, which means we go down 1, right 2. And we can do that a few more times. And then to make the v, we also go down 1, left 2. And we can do that again. And then we just connect our dots. And there's our upside down v, because this had a negative a value. All right, your turn to practice. Let's see if you can use your notes from the previous problem to graph these two. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a try, and then hit play to check your answers. All right, so when we look at the first one, the first thing we want to do is get our vertex. So we're going to go opposite of negative 4. Don't change the positive 2. That gives us positive 4, positive 2. Our a value is going to be negative 3. So to graph it, we start with a point at 4, 2. And then with a slope of negative 3, that would be down 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. Uh, we can go as much as we want. And then at some point, we need to go down 3, left 1. And that's how we're going to end up with a V. We go ahead and connect. And that would be your graph for the one on the left. On the right side, we're going to do opposite of positive 1. Don't change the negative 6. That would give you negative 1, negative 6. Our a value is 2 thirds. So we start with our point at negative 1, negative 6. This time we're going to go up 2, right 3. And we can do that again or a couple times. And then to make the v, we also go up 2, left 3. Do that again. And then we just add our lines. And we have completed our absolute value graph. The last thing I want to show you in this video is the relationship between absolute value graphs and piecewise functions. So if we take our most basic absolute value graph, notice that if we were to divide this graph right down the middle, we have a left side and a right side. So these can be written as a piecewise function. So if we start with the right side of our graph, that is simply the line 
f of x equals x, or y equals x. But that only happens to the right of our vertex, which means it happens when x is greater than or equal to 0. The left side also goes through 0, 0, but it has a slope of negative 1, so it is the line negative x. And that happens when x is less than 0. Now, it's, it's your choice on the order that you put these in. I know a lot of times, piecewise functions, we like to go from left to right, um, which means I would have flipped the order here. But I kind of like to copy the absolute value graph and just take off the absolute value signs. And those are when we are to the right of our vertex or greater than our vertex. And then you add the negative sign for everything that's to the left or less than the x value of our vertex. Let's take a look at one that's a little more complicated. Let's revisit the last absolute value graph that we did. Notice that if we draw a line right down the middle through the vertex, it divides the graph into two lines. And this means we can write it as a piecewise function. So the right side, all you have to do is copy your absolute value equation. Just change the absolute value signs to parentheses. And this occurs when x is greater than or equal to the x value of the vertex. So this happens when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And then on the left side, the slope changes. Notice it still passes through the same vertex. And notice the slope is now, if we just focus on the left side, the slope is going down to right 3. So that means we have a slope of negative two-thirds. Everything else is the same because it still goes through the point negative one-six. This part of the line happens when x is less than negative one. Notice I could have also had x is greater than negative one for the top and x is less than or equal to negative one for the bottom. The rule is one of those has to be or equal to so that you have a closed point at the vertex. And so there's your connection between absolute value graphs and piecewise functions. And that'll conclude our video on absolute value graphs.